our culture is not, you know, always doing spalts on the same form or always running a test a certain way. Our culture is really about not being afraid of the truth, always searching for the truth. That's the elements of our legacy that we always want to maintain. Also, the fact that a successful flight test doesn't always end in a successful flight. Those are elements of our culture that we can, by setting the example, by discussing with the workforce, uh, by keeping it first and foremost in everybody's thoughts, that enables us to transfer the culture. It's really unique when you look at flight testing, kind of the, the magnitude of, of what's involved. If you look at just one Trident 2D5 missile, it, it's pretty impressive, but flight testing is one of those things that allows us to demonstrate uh, the continued credibility of our deterrent to our adversaries. This launch this morning represents approaching the end of two years that we have been conducting test flights from here at the Cape. The purpose of these test flights has been to check the design that has come out of the designer's pen, look at the hardware we've been building, and to confirm that this missile we are producing and the systems that support it is going to do what we want it to do when we put it into production. Flight testing is a big part of the SP program. It's uh, extremely important both uh, to certify crews, we do a demonstration and shakedown operations, and that's how we do the end-to-end -end certification of the weapon system. It is a graduation exercise. Uh, following successful day so, we certify a ship that can take on its strategic outload and uh, begin strategic patrol. We also established the Commander's Evaluation Test Program, which establishes the initial performance of the weapon system, both accuracy and reliability, and those are the planning factors by which we give STRATCOM to do the targeting work understand how to use this weapon system that we're giving them. The CET program then is followed closely behind by a follow-on CET program uh, where we are doing really change detection and it has serves two purposes both to, to see to change uh, to detect changes in the weapon system performance uh, but also to uh, visually uh, show the world that this deterrent system works. And then when we test our missiles here uh, it shows the world the accuracy and the dependability of this, of this missile. And there's no other weapon system that is as accurate and as dependable as this. There is an organization in our group called the Flight Test Working Group, and there you have your reentry teams, your, um, your guidance teams, your systems integration teams, the people who want to do experiments on the boat itself. Anyone who wants to learn about how their system works a little bit better or try out a new capability, they use the flight test program in order to exercise how well they did in their planning and design. Testing also helps us monitor and ensure that um, we understand as, as the system ages. It also feeds into our development activities of the future. We have the opportunity to learn from flight tests. It actually, from my perspective, creates some constructive tension. You'll find that um, when you're trying to develop something and put it on the front end of a missile, it's very easy for me to say, well, come on, it's not that dangerous, just go off and fly it. But then when you sit on the other side of the table and they say, okay, but if this missile fails, you just screwed up the deterrent. That's a totally different perspective. Before every test, we go through a very rigorous process to ensure that, one, we ensure absolute safety of the crew and the submarine, and two, that we're well prepared to satisfy the objectives of that mission. So when you get to, to scenarios like that, and consequences such as safety related things, no failure is not an option. We are continuing to develop uh, materials of the future, uh, scenarios of the future, and sometimes we'll have maybe a clogging of this valve or a clogging of that valve. It's just incredible how important that is. That learning that you get, it allows us to engage our newer workforce, do level of knowledge transfers, They'll learn more in the four months after a flight test than they'll learn sitting for two years if there's no anomaly or no flight test going on. Polaris in its first configuration. But when the button was pushed and the bird took off, it failed to program. And the range safety officer exploded it 40,000 feet in the sky. Post-mortem verdict, a malfunction caused by a faulty part. There was another try. But the Polaris AX-2 blew up on its pad. The second stage, blown clear, seemed all right, but had to be destroyed. I think uh, SP has been very successful 
in executing our test programs over the years. Of course, from time to time you have setbacks, but I think one of the hallmarks of our organization is we don't view those as failures, we view those as opportunities to understand what happened. And once we go gain that understanding, we then figure out how to take action to ensure that we don't repeat those errors of the past going forward. For most of SSP's history, we've been in production and development at the same time, where we're deploying a system and developing the next one. So um, Life Extension 2 is a, is a similar approach. I do believe it's an exciting time. There's a lot of new things going on in the program with Life Extension 2, um, just a lot of new ideas of, of what we can do with Life Extension 2. And you learn a lot when something doesn't go right. And then there's a time where it kind of needs to go right. There, to me, there's a point in time, and it's different based on what product you're using, where failure is okay because you're learning, right? You let them know where failure is okay and where it's somewhat expected and, and where it's not. And, and with that uh, going forward, I think we can be a real strong program.